the sailor and the sailmaker both have a lot of sewing to do, the sailor in the past that is to say. The sack maker um, also has to sew by, by hand for many years. Um, so one common tool that the, the, the sailor, the sail maker and the sack maker would have would be a, a palm. A palm is a tool, a kind of thimble many people refer to it as. It, it enables you to be able to push with all of your strength the needle through the canvas. They come in many shapes and forms. The heavier and beefier they are, the more likely they are to be sailmaker's tools. And the sailmaker often has two kinds of palms. Sailmaker's palms, there is a seaming palm and that has a small indentations in the metal piece which you push against. And then the, the roping palm has large indentations for a much bigger needle. Roping is actually the sewing of the rope to the edge of the sail and uh, that needs much harder push. It's a bigger needle and the thumb helps to pull it tight. But before we start to seam a piece of canvas, we need to fold over the edge. And then we want to form it into, into shape. And that will bring to bear another tool that the sailmaker uses called a seam rubber. So let's just on this small piece here as an example. The seam rubbers come in a whole range of styles. They can be all metal, well rather metal with a wooden handle and you can use them for pressing like that. They can be wood. Now the all wooden ones tend to be from a sailmaker or a sailor that's been at sea, more likely a sailmaker and I think they often have a degree of ornamentation about them, uh, little decorations of, of chip carving perhaps, um, these sorts of tools, almost a badge of office for the sailmaker, um, perhaps made by one of his fellow crewmen as a, as a kind of payment for, perhaps for a scrap of canvas or whatever. Um, often actually the sailmaker might just use the back of his knife, but they are very distinct to the sailmaker. Now, in all trades, you need some kind of vice, something to hold your product, your, your, your item working with. The sailmaker uses a hook, a bench hook. then there is a, a, a good degree of pressure needed to get that through. You can see I'm pushing with my entire arm. And you can understand then the need for a tool that gives you plenty of push. Impossible to sew this kind of canvas, and this is not a particularly heavyweight canvas. Um, there are heavier canvases than this. I am not a sailmaker by, by profession and so my stitches may be a little, as they say, running home, a little bit on the uneven and a bit far apart, but the principle of 
sign the canvas is clearly seen and just how much pressure is needed to sort it out. And I can move the, the hook along a little bit. So, there we have it, the sailmaker's needle used with the sailmaker's palm. The sailmaker's needle is straight and it is triangular. They've been that shape for literally hundreds and hundreds of years. A sailmaker's needle is not to be confused with what is called a packing needle or a sack needle. A sack needle has a curve to it. They vary in sizes from a little one which is about as small as it comes to something even sometimes I've seen them even larger than this always with the curve to them. They are sack needles or pack needles or packing needles but they are not sailmakers needles. They're used primarily for people to sew up a sack when it's full of grain or whatever. This kind of sewing up doesn't necessarily need a palm. It's, it's done crudely, it's done at the docks, it's done on the farm. These sorts of needles crop up all over um, in all kinds of cultures so they're not specific to the, the rope and canvas working trades but right the way across the uh, the spectrum of, of workers. In the old days the needles had names rather than numbers. The needle sometimes has a maker's name on it, sometimes has a number. The number relates to the diameter of the wire which is the Birmingham based on the wire gauge. So um, I guess this is probably about a number 10 or something of that nature. Um, this one would perhaps be a number 13 or that sort of elk I would say neither of these have got makers names on but they do um, quite regularly do